There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge. All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. And also, a Merry Christmas if that's what you celebrate. It's actually pretty late in the day right now. I was able to get a little bit of charting in today, but I was a little bit busy for Christmas. So I only have a couple setups this week and also the SPY and the QQQ are currently stuck in a range. There's not really too much to see there we'll over that later. So this could be a relatively quick video. As you can see, we also really don't have any types of data this week. You can see Christmas and then we got the k Schiller Home Price Index. This is not going to move the market more than likely. We have nothing scheduled for Wednesday. And on Thursday, just our usual initial jobless claims with also advanced retail inventories, advanced wholesale inventories, and then pending home sales is probably going to be the biggest thing on Thursday. But that's going to be a hit or miss. It just depends on how extreme the reading is. And sometimes the market reacts, sometimes it doesn't. And then on Friday, just the Chicago business barometer, this usually does not move the market. And then the bond market actually closes early. So I'm not sure if that's going to affect liquidity in the market that day or not and maybe the market will feel slow. This whole week could feel slow. People are just coming back from holidays probably. People could still be out on holidays, so there might be really nothing going on this week. So in light of all the inactivity this week and lack of data, I would definitely just take it slow in the market. You don't have to rush or anything. The new year is going to start soon. You'll probably see a lot of new portfolio rebalancing, a lot of action in the market once the new year comes. That's when you start seeing big money investors kind of start to rebalance their portfolios. They start getting in and out of large positions. And you will see that reflect in the price action with volatility and also overall just good volume. And onto the seasonality, which is kind of just proving my point. You can see there's actually from the 26th to the 31st, which is tomorrow till the end of the month. It's basically averaging chop. You, can, you don't really see anything major here. You got 47% of winning trades in the last 15 years in this little setup. So there's really not too much going on in terms of seasonality either. It's kind of choppy, which really matches the indexes right now. The SPY and the QQQ are both stuck in a range. And you can see we kind of don't start going up until after the first. Once the first comes, you do start to see that kickoff to the upside all the way up into the 12th of January, about midpoint of the month. That's when the action can start picking up. And like I said, that's when you'll start seeing that portfolio rebalancing in the market. And you'll probably see a lot more action than you will see right now. That's after all the holidays are done, after everybody gets back, after Wall Street gets back from whatever they're doing, probably some extravagant vacation. Once they get back, you'll start seeing that activity in the market and you'll probably start to see more of a trend. And obviously the market can still move regardless of volume. The SPY and the QQQ melt up on low volume regardless. But if you want to start seeing those bigger moves, you kind of do need a little bit more volume, a little bit more activity, a little bit more participation. And onto the setup, so we'll just go over them real quick. So this week, I was only able to find three that I like, and two of them are probably just going to be day trades. If you weren't going to day trade them, you definitely want to buy time because they are shorts and they're for puts. And with any puts or any shorts right now, it's extremely risky because you get the Fed kind of green lighting the rate cuts coming up early in 2024, and a lot of people are kind of grasping onto that and it makes it a little bit more hard to short it makes volatility a little bit lower people are more hesitant to insure their portfolios with puts and overall demand for hedging is just down so number one here we're gonna go over ung real quick i've actually had this on the list before it had one really good day once the market opened monday the last time we looked at it, it ripped like seven percent and it's been selling off after that ever since so now that it's made it back on the list, I have a pretty good reason to expect a potential bounce in this. You can see that these Bollinger Bands are flashing multiple signals on the one week. You got one, two, three, four, five arrows. This means these are five arrows going outside two standard deviations, which is two standard deviations away from the median line, which is this 20 SMA, might be the 20 EMA, which is the median line for the Bollinger Bands. So price is two standard deviations away from this median line in the Bollinger Bands. Up here, this would be two standard deviations above the median line or 20 SMA. So a lot of times if price starts to get two of these upper Bollinger Bands or lower Bollinger Bands, you will kind of see the market try to snap back. People assume that the market gets oversold, it's trading outside two standard deviations and it'll try to bounce or reverse. You can see it right here, pulled up into two standard deviations above, fell, 
did it right here as well pulled up into two standard deviations fell likewise here to the downside it's been flashing the signals but we haven't seen that snapback yet we are just now starting to see some signs on the one week candles that we could see some type of reversal so you have a somewhat bullish candle here i wouldn't say it's the most bullish candle because you don't really have any confirmation of taking out a previous low reclaiming over a previous high anything like that but now you do have this one big lower shadow weight candle right here which looks pretty good. It looks like buyers are trying to put pressure to the upside. And also this is coming off of a bottom. If I saw a candle like this at the top of something, at the top of a trend, I'd be a little bit more worried. But this is more at the bottom of the trend. So it could be trying to signal a reversal. I already do have 100 UNG shares and I also have some clapped options. I spent about $200 on some six and seven calls a while back and they just were not able to do anything. So I may be willing to put like another 200 bucks in there. For options but overall i'm kind of just holding my shares right now with a 550 average so i'm hoping eventually it can snap back get above our average maybe run back to 587 and beyond it needs to get over 587 which is a slow before i can project higher so if you were to get some calls on ung and you want to play that seasonality pattern that comes up towards the winter you will want to buy probably march expiration maybe even later than that with a February expiration at minimum. So that's for UNG, looking at calls, max upside I could see over some months, 587, need to see what it does from there. But hopefully this little one week candle with the lower shadow wick can turn into a reversal. And next we're going over CCL. So this is pretty simple. It's pulling up into this 1955 resistance. So I'm watching this actually for a pullback down into 18. 18 is this little wick low right here from when we dumped last Wednesday. We pulled back very heavily in the market just for one day and then we snap back. But that is the pretty much max low for right now. I would like to see CCL pull back into that. And I'm going to be looking at puts on this, probably just day trades, nothing major. And I probably need to see overall, I need to see it get back under the 9 EMA to even really project any lower. And then you also have this one day MACD going negative as well. Let me turn these Bullinger bands off. You can see the one day MACD starting to cross negative. So that's one momentum signal kind of starting to go negative. And then you have this big old resistance. Obviously risk off would be if it starts breaking out kind of like NCLH a couple weeks ago. NCLH had one decent pullback the first day on Monday, pulled back about 3%. And then after that, it just totally ripped. So these little cruise line setups can definitely rip to the upside, especially when markets expecting rate cuts. Got to be careful with that. But either way, good risk to reward here. You got the MACD going in your favor. And then overall, it really would need to get under the one day nine EMA to even project any lower than $18 right now. So that's for CCO, looking at short-term puts. Definitely wouldn't swing short-term puts overnight, but if you were to do any further out puts to swing, you definitely want to go with probably February minimum for expiration. So that's for CCL, risk off over 1955. If you wanted to be a little bit more aggressive, you could probably do risk off over 20 flat. And like I said, I want to see that pull back down into the 18s, lower 18s. That'll probably give you a nice little pullback to the downside. Maybe pay about 20, 30% on some options, depending on how the premiums are paying. And last but not least, we're going over UPST here. So you can see this is actually a huge drop base drop supply zone. As mentioned right here, it's drop creates a base, huge drop to the downside. This one candle was down 34%. So this is a huge sell imbalance. Something happened in this candle to lead to this sell imbalance. And that's why it's kind of starting to see that resistance right here. Ironically and conveniently, once it got up to this base candle area, you can see there's a hard rejection candle right here from Wednesday. And it's been stalling out there ever since. So one thing I need to see, I need to see it take out 43.33. If I can get under 43.33, this little big buy and balance candle would probably fill up, head back to $38 maybe, something like that. It's this little wick high right here. It's a little base back test area right there at 38.02. Once price broke over that, that's kind of when the momentum started. So watch that 38 base. If this 43.33 breaks down and fills that down candle, that 38 level probably try to hold up on the short term. But make sure you wait for the signal. So go ahead, mark that 43.33, hit add alert. We'll name it structure low. And then once 43.33 breaks, that's your signal to go lower. You want to wait for that signal like last week. So we had SQ for puts last week and it wasn't able to give us our signal under the Friday low and it ended up breaking out of the downtrend. So if you would have paid attention, made sure you didn't go short until it broke under the Friday low, you would have been saved by that and you wouldn't have entered prematurely because SQ actually did rip. So we never got our signal on that, unfortunately. I think the only setup that worked good last week was probably CVX. 
And then we also had Uber. I guess I had one two percent down day. My February puts went up to twenty percent, but I wanted to get more out of it. I want to see it get under that nine EMA. So I'm still holding those February Uber puts. So maybe that'll play out in the next couple of weeks. We'll see. But I would say CVX was the only setup last week that did pretty good. I had two green days. I would say there was a really nice rip off of 150, which is that support or the reclaim zone. We wanted to see it back over and I had a pretty good run off that made it through almost all the gap, but kind of fell short and had some resistance towards the end of the week. So hopefully this week, it'll be a little bit more consistent on our trade ideas instead of just one kind of playing out. We have had some really good ideas though the past couple months. I mean, every week there's been one type of banger in there with multiple runners as well, kind of all on the same list, which is pretty rare. It's not always gonna happen, but I do like to see that consistency because then I know for a fact, if one person just took one of the setups that I know that it worked for them. So that's why I like to see that, but I don't expect anything out of the market like that. It's not just always gonna work perfect every single time. So you gotta be careful with that. Hopefully this week, UPST will break down this low, kind of give us our signal. CCL, you already have a confirmed rejection at resistance. So I don't think you really need to wait for a signal on that. Just maybe, you know, be careful with the 9 EMA if it can get down there. And then UNG, just buy time. You want to be patient with that. It's called the Widowmaker for a reason. Natural gas is the most volatile commodity you can trade. So you got to be careful with it. So that's the video, guys. Like I said, SPY and QQQ are stuck in a range this week. There's not really anything I can give you on this other than, you know, watch for resistance at 475.90. You can probably try short-term puts off that area if it can get up there. Maybe trade the breakout if it can get over that 475.90. But right now, people are just waiting for the, you know, the highs to get taken out and they kind of trade off of that or waiting for some type of dip into a structure low, that's gonna be you know around 470, a little bit lower than that at this demand zone. So if it can pull into that area down here, you can see it actually pulled into it on Wednesday. So the seasonality actually had us pulling back a little bit last week and we did get that in one day right here. So the seasonality was right in that aspect, even though it wasn't supposed to average a big dip like this, you know, a 1.4% candle, it was still able to follow that seasonality and then people just bought the dip right away for the Santa rally. So this is a rally base rally zone, pulled in one candle, ripped to the upside for two days. So that's basically it guys. I mean, there's not really anything here. Get away for 475.90 to get taken out. You could probably look for resistance at that area short term for short term put trade or wait for it to pull into demand around 470 to 469.50. s And that's about it. Same for QQQ, basically stuck in a range. So just make sure you're marking your structure high and your structure low from this big red candle. Also, this little rally base rally demand zone, you can mark that as well. You can see it had a nice push up candle right here off of it. So we're still bullish, but just haven't broken out yet. So it's the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our extra YouTube channel. Sorry, it's a little bit short this week, but indexes are stuck in a range and it's pretty hard for me to find setups as well as I really didn't get the chart as much as I would like to because I was a little bit busy for the holidays. So hope you guys still enjoyed. I love you guys and I'm out.